This presentation covers controlling DSLR and smartphone camera settings. A proper exposure contains a true white, a true black, and a balance of tonal ranges in between. Exposure refers to the relative darkness and lightness of a photograph. Your camera meter bases exposure on ISO, f-stop, and shutter speed, and can be described as your exposure value, EV. A proper exposure has an even or balanced amount of tones. Tone refers to the levels of brightness in the photograph, from solid black to pure white, and this includes color. Shadows are dark tones, highlights are bright tones. Focal points are the area or areas your camera focuses on to determine the correct exposure. Focal points use your camera's light meter reading, which determines the exposure and impacts image sharpness as well as contrast. Your camera will focus depending on your camera settings. You can use autofocus to determine the focal point or manually control this. The light in your photograph, along with the focal points captured during exposure by your camera's light meter, determines how much detail appears in the brighter and darker tones and impacts contrast. Contrast describes the relationship between the darkest and brightest tones of an image. The light meter interprets the image as points with different brightness, as if the image was all black and white. Each point is evaluated against the camera's zero, which is an 18% gray. On a digital monitor, 18% gray looks like 50% gray, which is the middle shade of gray between black and white. High contrast occurs when the difference between darkest and lightest portions of an image are more extreme, when the shadows are very dark and highlights are very bright. A low contrast image has a tonal range with more gray tones and light shadows and dim highlights. Images with extremely low contrast are considered flat. Notice how the histograms for each image differ, with the higher contrast image having more shadows and less midtones. The lower contrast image has a more even range of tones. To add mood, emphasize emotion, or spotlight an element, explore low and high key lighting. A low key image has low contrast and is mainly even tones. A high key image has high contrast and can be mostly shadows. ISO is the degree of sensitivity of the camera to available light. ISO is expressed in numbers. Lower ISO settings are less sensitive, have more detail and less noise. Mid-range ISO settings are best for general photographic needs and need less light overall and are versatile in most situations. Higher ISO settings are good for sports and concerts when you can't always rely on a flash. Extremely high ISO settings, such as 6400 and higher, are not recommended. When photographing in relatively dim lighting conditions, use a high ISO rating, but no more than 1600. With high ISOs, you get digital noise or interpolation, where the camera sensor makes up missing information. This gets even worse when zoomed in on a subject in low light. As a best practice, turn on grid lines to help organize your compositions. These are helpful for aligning horizons or using the rule of thirds. On DSLRs, you can do this in the menu. On smartphones, these are found in your camera settings. Getting to know your camera is an important step. Switching from automatic to manual shooting or program modes will help you step up your photography skills and try more creative or technical shots. Let's look at basic DSLR functions. It's recommended to manually set your ISO to 200, or you can simply use auto ISO. This is found in the menu of your DSLR. Be sure to consult your manual for your camera's directions. On DSLRs, you can view your light meter in live view or through the viewfinder. Options for light meter include, two options for light meters are shown on screen. Matrix or center weighted mode averages to middle gray and is indicated by a blank rectangle. Partial spot metering mode tells the camera to look at a small area around your current focal point. This is a precise metering mode in which the light meter will indicate if the focal point is lighter or darker than the middle gray color and averages based off of that point to 18% gray. 
Some DSLRs have nine focus points, with others having up to 61. DSLRs give you the ability to change your focus points for greater control. Set your center focus point, which is the fastest and most accurate one, on what it is you want to focus. Lock your focus by gently pressing your shutter button halfway, and then without releasing your finger, recompose the image to get the composition, and then gently press the shutter. You can also turn on manual focus if you need greater control. For taking stopped motion photographs, try shutter priority or sports mode on your DSLR. Digital cameras usually have a program mode for action shots that looks like a person running. Be sure you have ample lighting so you can get a fast enough shutter speed. Digital cameras usually have two program modes that control depth of field. The flower icon goes for shallow depth of field, whereas the landscape goes for maximum depth of field. You can also use aperture priority mode, shown in the illustration with an A or AV. To change the ISO setting on your DSLR, follow your camera manual's instructions. This is usually accessible on the back of the camera or in your camera's menu. The most common ISO camera settings are from 100 to 800. Depending on your digital camera model, you may also have them in the range of 64 or all the way up to 1600 and higher. Remember, the lower the ISO number, the slower the speed. The higher the ISO number, for example, 1600, the faster the speed. Some general rules for using ISO include use 100 or 200 when taking photographs outside in sunny conditions. If the sky's overcast or it's evening, then use an ISO within the range of 400 to 800. In cases of low light, you might need to set your digital camera ISO to 1600, especially if photographing moving subjects like people or if you're hand holding the camera. This may result in more grain or more noise in your image, especially if you don't have ample lighting. ISO 1600 is the recommended method for landscape or night shots. An ISO of 1600 is recommended for night photography. The best camera is the one you have with you, and most of the time that's your smartphone camera. Smartphone cameras are great tools to get you in the habit of photographing every day. There are several smartphone models made by Apple and the options are constantly evolving. Here's a few things you can almost always count on with an iPhone. Powerful sensors, the ability to zoom in at a macro level, manual adjustments like focus and exposure, faster shutter speeds to capture objects in motion, night mode for better shots when it's dark outside, and portrait mode to mimic a shallow depth of field. You can't manually set the ISO on an iPhone without the use of an app, such as those recommended in this presentation. The iPhone camera app handles automatic ISO controls well, however. The iPhones will always try to take the photograph at the lowest range of ISO 25, accompanied by a high shutter speed. If the light is reduced, iPhones will first adjust exposure, then increase the steps up to a maximum ISO of 2000 and higher in low light conditions. On iPhones, you can photograph in portrait mode. This allows you to not only adjust your aperture while taking the picture, but also afterwards, since the effect is created digitally. On supported iPhone models, you can use night mode to capture photos when the camera detects a low light environment. You can use night mode with iPhone 11 and later. Night mode automatically turns on when the camera detects a low light environment, as this one shown on screen. The night mode icon at the top of the display is visible when the feature becomes available, and it's yellow when active. With very low light, you can adjust your shutter speed up to 30 seconds or more, but be sure to use a tripod. Look at the red boxes from left to right to see how to control the shutter speed in night mode. In this example, the focus lock feature was activated as well by touching and tapping on the screen. You can also tap your screen to determine what point the image is in focus. Tap and press to lock the exposure 
indicated as AE and autofocus AF. To decrease the exposure, tap, hold, and drag the exposure slider down. To increase the exposure, tap, hold, and drag the exposure slider up. Compare the exposure information for these three images, noticing the differences. The iPhone changes not only the ISO, but the exposure value overall, adjusting the f-stop and shutter speed. iPhones default to a faster shutter speed to capture objects in motion when there's ample light. The built-in iPhone camera app does not have a shutter speed option unless you're in night mode. Typically, iPhone cameras will default to a faster shutter speed when there's more light. You will need a third-party app with iPhone manual camera control to modify ISO and shutter speed. There are many options out there, but there are three shown on the screen, including Halide Mark II Pro Camera, Lightroom Photo and Video Editor, and Camera Plus Pro Camera and Editor. Android mobile devices are very different from one another, but most include these key functions. Quick launch of the camera app for impromptu photography, easy ability to turn on grid lines and location tags, automatic high dynamic range for varied lighting conditions, pro mode for controlling camera settings manually, and live focus for adjusting background blur. Every Android phone is different, so they have different capabilities. However, there's common features shared across the devices. Pro mode is best for Android users who want full control of their phone's camera settings. Using pro mode will allow you to manually adjust capture settings for your camera, including ISO, aperture, color, focus, and temperature. On Android phones, you can go into pro mode to control the aperture as well as shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and exposure. The more you photograph, the better photographer you'll become.